Well, hello there, everyone. How's it going? It's still pretty early in November, um, and the college basketball season is quite young. However, we're, we are, you know, more than a few days into the season, and I uh, was experimenting with the NCAA, you know, men's college basketball algorithm here. We are, you know, I guess like seven days into the season. Most teams have played a game. Almost every team has played a game, I believe. And so the file is kind of getting ready to, you know, how do you use this thing? How do you update this thing? It's time to do a tutorial. And this tutorial will be pretty evergreen throughout the season. Meaning if you understand what's going on in this video, you will be able to update the college basketball algorithm. Right now it's like $185, I think, to purchase the subscription for the rest of November. But after November, I will still sell a single copy of this file that doesn't have all the historical games in it, but that is just the, the way where you can just insert a day's games. And I can show you how to do that, and I'll show you how to move a day forward and go through all the different sheets. You'll also need a subscription to Rotowire. I pay $9.99 a month for their access to the statistics here. You'll need that to get some of the exports that you need to, to generate everything and to grab things like injuries and to grab different statistics, because I believe you can't grab everything, including lines and, and definitely injury report. So, so those two things together will get you to where you need to be, where you can update this thing and have this thing do its, its rendering of its projections for the day, which, which are, I would say they are the standard for what you will see coming out of these games. Um, it, like it's just gets so good that this thing basically predicts the lines, but, but the fun part about right now, earlier in the season is that we have something called current year stats now that are very, very limited. They're super limited that like teams have, you know, three games played, four games played, three games played, two games, two games played, one game played super limited stats, but it still provides something. And when you do that, there's there's a different look. There's a different look and it's getting better. And that's what makes things really intriguing. Arkansas State, for example, at this crazy plus 1400 line, it went all the way down to uh, plus 1100 after I mentioned it in the video today. And they did cover without a problem. I took them to cover. I also tried taking them to win and they fought kind of hard in this game. So there's some interesting things to be learned about the new current year stat. And also, how do we distribute those current year stats? So we're going to get into all those things, and we're going to go step by step, sheet by sheet. What do you do? How do you get all this stuff in here? Okay, ready? Here we go. You start in Rotowire. You go to sports betting. You go to college basketball sports. Oops, oops, no, you don't do that. You go to college basketball right there. Sports betting, and you you pick the day. You, know, you go to the day. You go to tomorrow and you export this Excel file down here. And it comes out, and it comes out looking like this here. And you're gonna paste it here in the odds compiler sheet. Normally, this is all gonna be clear, and you're gonna paste it right up here in the odds compiler sheet, but I, I'm starting to add some days and do some more complex stuff. But let's understand the theory about what we're doing is we're bringing in data from Rotowire that comes out in these exports that they provide us. They're fantastic service. You should pay for their service. I highly recommend them. They're good folks. They're people just like you and me that are working hard tracking people's Twitters and getting stat statuses on like who's playing. And they're hardworking people, and I think they deserve compensation for what they do for sure. So I would I would highly recommend subscribing to them. But what they give you is they give you enough to feed the algorithm what it needs. So you go to college basketball fantasy sports stats. You're going to grab the injury report right here. You're going to export that one. That's huge because it's going to, when you get that, it's going to go into the injury report. You're also going to go to the stat sheet and go to the regular stat sheet here and do the per game, everybody, big Excel file. And you're also going to go to team stat sheet and do this one as well. And once you've done those, you're going to add the injury to the injury report here. You're going to add the current year. Um, you're going to you're going to do the current year team stat one that you get from Rotowire right here. That's this one. It's called the current year team stat one. Current year school stat is from a different place. It's from Pro Reference. You got to grab this and then copy and paste it. I do off of Google Chrome right here. So you follow that link. That's a different one. I'm not going to show it in the video, but that's 
that's the other one you have to update. So it's current your team stats, like stuff you don't need to update anymore. We're going to move off to the right. Don't need to do anything prior year anymore. It's just one, two. The matrix won't be updated much at all because all the names are working. Player stats, so it's current your team stats, current your school, school stats, player stats, which you also downloaded from RotoWire, goes right here. Injury report, which you also downloaded from RotoWire, goes here. Injury report pivot, you refresh it and it will slightly alter. You got to make sure that you, this formula is right over here. Next, the cube. Did you connect everything to your odds compiler? Right? You brought in a bunch of games. Did you connect them in the cube? If you don't know, you could go to the bottom, do equal sign, go to the odds compiler, and start pulling stuff over. I copy and paste this as FX, paste FX, paste is the formula of stuff. You need to pull down this margin formula. And then if you can see what I'm doing really, really fast, I'm just creating the connection between the two sheets so that you can bring in the games and then date them appropriately, All right? Now I've already done yesterday, so we're gonna undo everything I just did. But that's the logic between bringing a game into the cube. The tricky part is remember this margin formula is a formula and can't be overwritten is not a connection to the odds compiler. Everything else that's going into the cube right here is a connection to the odds compiler and works all the way up to operating strength, which is fine and relates to, um, and relates to the injury report pivot. So I already brought all these games in here. There are errors when there's a team that's not in our matrix. Missouri is playing somebody who's not in our matrix. Missouri is playing, let's see here, fun. Playing Lindenwood. Lindenwood is not in our master rating of schools, so that's why you end up getting an error for a game like Lindenwood at Missouri. Don't worry about it. We don't have stats for them, so we couldn't project the game anyway. Same thing probably happened with the opponents at Illinois, Southern Illinois, and St. Francis. But you do have all these games essentially in here for tomorrow, and a couple games finishing up right now for the rest of today. So you've got everything once you label them and bring them all in and you can just refresh and we get a look at tomorrow being 13th. But I haven't updated stuff for tomorrow yet, like the current year team stats, school stats and player stats. They're not ready yet. An injury report will change tomorrow. So all this stuff is moot and it's not even, it's not even close to accurate yet because a whole nother game has been played today. There was, you know, however many games there were today, there were looks like 34 ish games, at least more that we got in there. So, so it will matter when all that stuff is updated. But what does this say, right? This says that for Saturday, for the games we have, which I know is incomplete because they're going to add games tomorrow. So I'm sure there are more than it's 27 games tomorrow. I, I guarantee you there are more than that. I just, they have, just haven't added them yet. So when we get more lines, you're going to go in and you're going to Re <clears throat> repaste that stuff in your odds compiler here, starting at the, at the game and override it and then reconnect it to your cube and extend your cube down. You can even extend your cube down right now if you want to, so that anytime you start adding more games to the odds compiler, they're just going to automatically fill themselves in. But you got to remember to bring your date down. I almost recommend bring, bringing the date all the way down with that because I made a mistake on uh, yesterday and not doing that. And I missed a bunch of games when I posted it early in the video, I screwed everything up. This is, this is pretty complicated database management. I'm not going to argue with you about like, I, I think I can dumb it down so that, you know, you can go through this process of pasting stuff, refreshing stuff, connecting stuff and updating stuff, and you're going to be all right. But okay. I'm just showing you the logistics about updating this. Wait till what the rest of this video is about, which is theory about how to analyze it and regressively test it after we look at Saturday. Because that's the really interesting thing. I haven't got into that yet. So as for tomorrow with current year stats, um, you are going to see some interesting thing. I'm sure you're going to see some underdogs. Oakland at home against Oklahoma state plus 450. Um, I like the whole, you always like, I don't want to say like, but you like, you like the home ones. Fullerton over my alma mater, Vermont? Really? They play too, they just beat Pepperdine. And Elon over Harvard, but these games are probably in a tournament or something. Anyway, th that's kind of a glance at tomorrow, which I don't really even care about all that much. What I want, what I do care about is doing this stuff. So as we add stats, we're going to be able to change distributions of things. And what I want to show you how cool this is, is go back to yesterday. 
being uh, being Saturday. And you can see that we have some results, like we were 23 and 11 and 19 and 15 on the spread using current year stats. And using past year stats, it was worse, but you can now change these distributions right here and right here. I almost wanna format them in the same fashion, and I will. Because you have the option to change both of these and they will change here, which affects everything here whenever you change this. So we were 23 and 11 with current year stats so far. There's two games finishing up right now, but we were 22 and 12, but really bad on the spread with past year. So already, already with even just two and three games in for each team, we're doing better with current year stats by the spread for sure. And I think by game as well. And I also like the order of this. Like we missed, we missed a bunch of stuff, but it's away teams. And what I tell you about away teams, watch out for away teams. Bustle, let's go back to a 5% bump, by the way. Um, all right. Speaking of away teams, they suck. Just never play them. Just don't ever play an away team and you will not regret it because you'll watch away teams get upset all day long. Home teams win. <laughs> Home teams are good. So here's the cool thing, right? We're looking at current year. Well, you can, like I said, you can go and you can change this. So instead of what we have right now, let's do everything based on total points per game. All right. And refresh this and see what happens. Was it still 22 and 12? It's now 21 and 13, but 25 and nine on the spread. What? Whoa. I didn't see that. What? Okay, so here's the fun part. And I'm so glad we did this. So through the process of testing different variables, those variables being wins and loss percentage, number of wins, nominal, these are not great early in the season because nominal doesn't mean anything. But win loss percentage, points per game average, opponents points per game average, margin of victory, strict schedules all screwed up early in the season. These are getting better, but still kind of tough, these rating systems. But what we just did with just points, with just points, was apparently crush it on the spread at 74%. What one and why? What order is this in? Everything at the top is winning because why? Because these teams put up offense? It doesn't matter what their strength of schedule is. That's crazy. I mean, the chunks of losses don't start don't start until the margin hits 12%. So everything over 20%, look at this. Everything covers the spread right here. That's pretty amazing. I'm talking about this right here. Except this game that's in progress. And who's that game's almost over. That's UC San Diego, which is winning. No, they're losing, actually. They're losing. <laughs> well, they ain't going to cover spread then. But here, the, all this green here, that is like 15, 14 out of 15 um, a picks up on the spread, these teams. And I, I haven't researched this enough to understand why points per game is kicking this out so much, but that's phenomenal, right? So that, that's the whole point of this is now you have an ability. Now I want to make that thing worth a lot, you know? Um, and kind of dampen some of these other things. I'll even give it 60% because that was so good. And then you go back and see what this does. This is now 23 and 11, but 19 to 15 on the spread. Point is, wow, uh, it's, it's endless what you can do with this. Um, so I just want you to know that it's not that bad to update. It's, it's one, two, three, four, refresh. Uh, five odds, six update cube, and then you refresh this pivot and you're done every day. And you get this. And then you can start entering in scores right here in the cube as a result. Identify neutral site games, which I did not do today. I apologize. Uh, I'm sure there are a bunch tomorrow. I'm looking quickly on my phone to see if it tells me. It does see... It, it kind of does, but not really. It, it, so, like, I know that uh, 
that Arizona State and Texas Southern probably is an Asheville thing. So you can start, you just have to, you have to, I just don't, I don't want to spend my time doing this, like doing this part of the, this is like too much. Like you just got to look it up. No, Texas Southern not playing. I, I don't know. Um, point is, I, it's too much for me to manually do this. I might put this up and have other people that want to um, research this, put this in there so that we, I can then just paste it in easily. That's something I might do in the morning in the Google Sheet, talking to you, Sean, if you want to help with this. Um, because that will obviously, identifying what's a true home game and what's not a true home game is important. And to ignore it makes you make accidental bad bets. I, of course, made that mistake both of the last two days. And like today, I didn't win money, but it was because I bet a bunch of away teams. Can I please laugh and tell you what I bet? St. Bonaventure, Wagner plus the points lost. Hartford plus the points lost. Middle Tennessee lost. Wolf, I didn't bet Wolford at least. I bet the Arkansas State plus the points and won, but I also bet them to win and they lost. I bet Marist and they lost. I bet Louisville and they lost. I bet Georgia State and they lost. It's not in this order in current year. It wasn't last year though. See how much better last year was? Oh my goodness. Ah, I can't wait to use current year only. This is why I migrate to current year so fast. I am operating with current year stats like the day after the season starts. And everyone's like, Ken, you can't do that. It's not a good sample size. You're right. You're right. It's not a good sample size. You know what else? You get a distorted view of how well this team is streaking at the start of the season. And you catch crazy, crazy shiznit is what happens. And Arkansas State or whatever didn't win today, but they did cover. And had they won, I got them at plus 1150 or something. You will hit some of that sometimes. Did anything hit today? Let, let's clear out today real quick. What was the biggest underdog that hit? You can do this by clearing this, going to sort options, descending by money line to see all of them, and finding the first wins. It was a plus 1,000 Alcorn, Alcorn State who, um, who under current season stats would have lost, obviously. Then the next one, see how far down it was? It really took, it's only one up big underdog in the first 18 games. Then we had Texas State, I believe, but we had St. Bonaventure here, did not have Kinesius. Kinesius was at home too, taking road teams. Makes you want to bump stuff. All right, I, I've talked enough, but the point is, is, this is how you update this thing. It's pretty awesome. And, um, you know, you purchase copies. You're going to be, if you, if you care about college basketball wagering, and if you find someone with a better simulation thing or technique or, or application or projection, if anybody beats this thing routinely, let me know, because that would probably just mean we need to adjust some of the variables and that we've been lazy on adjusting them because now, especially with current season variables to lay away from strength of schedule, which is obviously going to be crazy distorted it still shows up right here. So you can still look at it. And I'm intrigued to see, like, let's resort this and refilter this thing. Let's go back down by margin. Like this is the way that things are supposed to make sense. And then filter greater than mar percent margins greater than zero. You get the games and you get them supposedly in order. And you're supposed to have a bunch of wins here, right? Well, when you do it this way and you see what your spread covers were and did these teams cover the spread and where the spread cover is big, like here's, here's a 32 that covers, here's a 39 that covers, here's a 13 that covers, and the four and the seven don't cover, much smaller, right? So I didn't do this yet, but what happens when you descending by spread cover plus – yeah, that's top four win, three losses, but then another six out of seven. It's not bad up top with spread cover numbers above 10. And you lose some away teams and you can start filtering. I'm sorry, I'm just going too fast because there's just too much to talk about. But the point is it's endless. And, and while I will still do videos, I don't want to do a lot of them because I, I am not doing more work that I need to be doing. I'm still kind of chucking away at this, but because the current year stat part is now ready and it's really only a toggling a variable issue now to get this right 
you can update this yourself and there isn't anything super technical other than if I decide to do a projected score change related to injury percentage, but I don't think I will because college basketball has too many players and I can see how it's not going to work right uh, because you'd really have to be up to date with injuries and stuff. So I'd rather just leave the injury number as it appears right here. And even though it's all screwed up right now, it will start to look like something more. And it's something that we can dig into in the injury report. You can go and answer your questions in the Excel file to really do great handicapping on college basketball and make great picks. Because I know there are those of you who out there who really want to dig in and be like, well, who's this injury on Nebraska? Is this real? It's this guy, shoulder injury, and how good is he or whatever. You can start to really do that so that you see – if somebody is potentially seriously injured, it can get a, you know, a, a, a distorted line on the other team and stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff you can do with the file. I don't have time to do it every day, nor the desire, but the availability is there. And I feel like I need the, to express that to everyone because even though the price is really expensive, um, I consider it really expensive. If, if I was going to dedicate the time, dedicate the money or whatever at, and someone had built this and somehow I found it. Uh, and they said that it's going to be the best algorithm that you've ever seen predicting games. I would at least buy it and be like, all right, prove it, man. Be like, prove it. And I will prove it. <laughs> I'll prove it because as we adjust the percentages and it picks off dogs, you'll see all the lines on those dogs change all the time. <laughs> and you'll see it do just like it does for other sports when you focus on it. So that, that's my long-winded how-to tutorial about how to update this file. It can do amazing things and it can give you a look at a lot of games and give you a lot of intelligence. And so that's what it's here for. And if you do one thing on Sunday, based on the games we have here, we can't do anything with away teams because they're away. It's, it's one of these three. I like how we get to eliminate. It is. Oakland at home against Oklahoma State. Didn't Oklahoma State ruin our perfect um, our perfect thing a couple days ago? Weren't they the team that lost in that video? So this is interesting. So this is under current year stats, Oakland beats Oklahoma State at home at plus four fifty. Boy, that sounds like a that sounds like an underdog pick of pick of the day. The plus ten and a half also sounds great, right? Um, it's a fifteen percent margin with a five percent bump. So I don't know how we don't say Oakland. Now, what about prior year? Because I know current year ain't, ain't all it's cracked up to be yet. There's still a lot of weird stuff. What about prior year? Prior year underdogs, home underdogs, are East Tennessee State against Louisiana and still Elon up there against Harvard, but this is not a true home game. So you almost want to go zero bomb. And with a zero bomb, it's only East Tennessee State at plus 180 with a really, really slim margin. Is this a true home game? I don't know. All right. But generally, I think we're about ready to go with current year. And I think that even if it's not perfect and it's, you know, not, not winning every game and it's doing some weird stuff, there's probably still value in using it because I think it's still going to give you a distorted pick off of certain interesting things. And there are a good deal under those problems that too many of them are away. So one more thing we'll check. It's just home games. There are 16. So the way home teams work is they're basically all supposed to win. Now, will they prob probably not all of them, but maybe. Um, th there's that Oakland. There's that Elon. There's this Hawaii at only minus 175. There's Long Beach State at only minus 180. And there's Sacred Heart at only minus 238 and Loyola, Maryland against Brown, only minus 180. Those are somewhat pickable, all right? Good luck, everybody. May all your picks be winning.